Welcome to Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk 1180 for the best in Saturday talk radio. And now we're on 1230 KGEO at 10 o'clock on Saturday. And for the best in Wednesday talk radio on 1410 KERI on Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Your host is Clay Kerner and I'm Marty Pay. Clay's out taking a test this morning, so he couldn't be here. And for those of you that know the show, Clay is not asleep in the room. He is not here today. So we had a great show last week with two friends of ours, Jeremy Stott and Wesley Barrientos, who tomorrow, Sunday, will be starting their wall-to-wall bike ride from Bakersfield to Washington, D.C., over 4,000 miles. And for those of you that know Wesley, uh, Wesley will be doing the ride with a hand crank bike since he lost his legs in Iraq. So join us tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Shelby Pingree will start with the National Anthem at 7 o'clock at the Wall of Valor on Truxton. And it's not too late to donate by buying a mile. You can call 661-330-1411 or check them out online to buy a mile for Wesley or for Jeremy and support a great cause supporting our veterans. Today we've got another great show. In the second half, we have Stephanie Deutsch talking about her new book, You Need a Schoolhouse. It's the story of Booker T. Washington and Julius Rosenwald, the man who built Sears, and their quest to build schools in the segregated South. They built over 4,000 schools. But right now, we've got two very special people in the studio, Kathy Butler from the Downtown Business Association and the new chairman of the board, Steve McElvoy from Channel 23. Kathy, Steve, welcome to Taking Care of Business. Well, thanks for having us on. Thank you. Uh, Kathy, I have to tell you, it is, it is infinitely nicer for me to be looking at you across the table than Clay. Thank you. You're very welcome. I appreciate it. And Steve, <laughs> I guess congratulations are in order for... Uh, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> we'll see. See me at the end of two years. <laughs> two Kathy, years. Kathy's going to wear me out. Two-year commitment, huh? Kathy, so much to smart. do. So yeah. much to do. Well, and the last Steve's chairman was uh, Bob was on it for Bob four. Bell four yeah. years. Four years. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's it's interesting as you know. I just went off as the chairman of the board of the of the Chamber of Commerce up at Tehachapi, and you're right. A year isn't really enough. You really, no. you just you know, getting your stride at the end of the year, and then mm-hmm. somebody else steps into the. I don't position. have any stride yet. Well, I'm still working on that. It's only been, what, two weeks now or a week? Yeah. 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 I've been yeah. on the board, but it's different being on a committee. As opposed to being uh, the chairman. As opposed to being the chairman, yeah. yeah. The head honcho. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. And She's the was, head honcho. Well, this is true. You just, you know. <laughs> I just hang out. Oh, yeah. She does yeah. all the work. Well, you do exactly what she tells you to do. You know, it's just like at home. It's like with my wife. <laughs> well, you know, keeps a happy home. Just do what she says. When mom is not happy, nobody's happy. Exactly. When daddy's not happy, nobody cares. Exactly. <laughs> this is perfect timing because so much has been done downtown. Now it's time to market it, and Steve is the perfect person. Oh, he's a great to be marketer. Involved and mm-hmm. lead the charge. Well, tell us what's going on downtown now. I mean, you walked in here, really enthusiastic <laughs> attitude, which you always have, anyways. But yes. but the optimism was just spewing out. Well, we just had a very successful State of the Downtown Breakfast, and it's about building partnerships. And so much has happened this last year that it's taken us a year to kind of work on all these different projects, but now we're ready to promote from working with Keep Bakersfield Beautiful, which is the Adopt-A-Block project. We are also working with um, uh, the city and the Economic Development Department, and we have a big meeting next week uh, called the Arts Alive district. Uh, Another project we're working with the police department and the rescue mission and we're creating a, it's actually a no panhandling campaign. We have brochures and really to help the people you really when you donate on the street, you're not really helping them, you're enabling them and what we're trying to do is send them to the the groups that really make a difference and see if we can get them the help that they really need. Sure. So so how does the no panhandling work? Basically, there is there's a little pamphlet. Because here's really what happens. And I went down to a meeting that Kathy asked me to go down to in Riverside. And there's a difference between a panhandler, uh, uh, the professional panhandler, and the homeless person. And you really what you find out, and I learned this really in Long Beach and some other people that were doing this, the homeless that truly need help, they're usually not the ones coming up to ask you for money. Because oh, okay. they're they're usually a little they're a little more reserved, 
um, they got problems in their life. So they're not usually the ones that are coming up and they're the aggressive ones. The aggressive ones are the ones that make a professional living out of this. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones that are coming up. And it really, it, it, it structures downtown, but I've had it happen in the marketplace in the Southwest. I've had it happen everywhere. And the person comes up to you and says, hey, you know, my car just ran out of gas. Right. Uh, and you know, my car's right over there. And they point to the sea of cars in a parking lot. So you have no mm -hmm. idea. And they say, you know what? If you could just give me five bucks, man, I just need to get back to Fresno. Right. Well, they don't really need, I mean, look, these guys, some of these people make over $50,000 a year tax-free. Pretty good gig. But the problem is it keeps a lot of people away from downtown because they get so aggressive. Now, if they truly need help, we're going to give them that help. So basically what you'll do is you if, we hope to get these cards out in everybody's hands, all the business people and everybody downtown. So somebody comes up to you and they say they need money. On this card are all the places that they can go get true help. You know, there are, I think, Kathy, how many meals, free meals are served uh, Downtown that was that came up. It was like, it's like four or five or six free meals served downtown to the homeless uh, every day. Uh, so they, if they're truly in need of a meal, if they're right. truly in need of uh, a place to sleep, and if they're truly in need of that, there are a lot of places downtown for them to get that. So what happens is we are such a benevolent community. Mm -hmm. Bakersfield is. We give. Uh, out of guilt, right? We our lives are good. Even yes. even if our lives aren't that great, we still give sure. because we give out of guilt. We want these cards to alleviate that guilt because truly, if they need help, they can get that card and and it tells them how to go get that help. We'll even take them over there if they truly need that help. But if they don't, they don't need that help. That card's not going to help them where they want to get, and they're going to go to another town and do the aggressive panhandling in another sure. area instead of here. And that's going to improve the entire downtown area and the experience of being downtown. That's a great idea. We're having a conversation with Kathy Butler and the new chairman, Steve McElvoy. Um, I, I like the idea. It's great. It's um, I, I go to Venice quite a bit. I do a lot of bike riding down mm -hmm. there. And there are people out there that actually have the sign saying, I'm not going to BS you. I just want the money for booze. <laughs> you know? Well, at least they're honest. <laughs> you have to admire the honesty. Yeah. Um, Kathy, you were talking about what's going on next week. Yes, we're having an Arts Alive workshop. And basically, it's the businesses or the area from Chester to F and from 21st to 17th Street. Mm -hmm. You have the Fox, the Padre, all the great art galleries mm -hmm. and uh, activities that are taking place in that area. And it's time to bring the businesses together. Uh, there's a lot of projects that are planned, and we want the city wants to uh, inform uh, the businesses. They can ask any questions they have about construction and activities that's going to be taking place in the area. And I love it because the Arts Council of Kern uh, is working with the Bakersfield Californian, and they have applied for a grant for a mural on Front Porch Music. Great. Seven guitars right. were invented in Bakersfield, and on the front porch, um, their wall, they're planning on doing a beautiful mural depicting our history. Fantastic. And they're also changing that parking lot from kind of the dirt yes. structure to a regular <laughs> right. parking lot, right. Right? right? Yes, and also with lighting and uh, also um, landscaping. So mm -hmm. it's going to be very nice, and I believe that'll be the new valet parking instead of on 8th Street because that's a little tight. Mm -hmm. And it'll be also for use when we have big events. We can put, uh, you know, bands and entertainment. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and it's a great idea because when you look, when you, like you were saying earlier, when you walk outside of the Padre, all of a sudden, you know, what do you walk into? So <laughs> It's a little know. different. And one of the things we're real excited, we're working with Tony Martinez with the police department, mm -hmm. and our beat patrol is now tying in and partnering with the new Veterans Center on mm -hmm. Golden State. Mm -hmm. And any time they find a homeless vet on the street, they will call the vet center. They will get them off the street and get them the help they need. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. And the nice thing about the arts district is a lot of towns mm -hmm. uh, have sections that are kind of broken up. And as Donna explained us, they've really, if you've been downtown lately, you've mm -hmm. seen the Mill Creek Project, not just the park, but what's going on along Q Street all the way down there to create that that environment in there. So really what working with Donna, uh, this arts district, because they, they picked this area anyway because there are a lot of the theaters, there's mm -hmm. a lot of the arts galleries in there, uh, is to create an entire environment in there where you have a safe environment, you can walk, you can go to a restaurant, you can go to a gallery, you can go see a play, uh, so, uh, another function down there. So by putting this all in one area, uh, it, it helps us instead of having this huge thing because downtown's a huge area. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try to take this in small sections, break it up, and give, and start to build that downtown. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is a great idea. When we come back from the break, let's talk a little bit about uh, the DBA versus, say, the Chamber of Commerce and 
you know, is is there a need for the DBA now that we don't have redevelopment funds? You know, a lot of people are questioning, you know, now there's no money. You know, how does that change the landscape of everything? So when we get back from the break, we'll be back in a moment on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk 1180.